Hello, welcome back. My name is Daniel Gonzalez. In this video, I'm sharing my process on how I painted Siesta Luna. Most of my time is spent thinking about the composition, and once I figure out what I'm going to do, I go ahead and sketch it out on my canvas or wood panel. In this case, I'm using a wood panel that's 12 by 12 inches. I used a few coats of clear gesso and sanded it down so it's nice and smooth. I changed up the legs here because they looked a little too flat. I'm always playing with the balance of making the skeleton a little too anatomical or a little too cartoony and just trying to find it to where it's not uh, too academic. I want it to be playful and have the feeling that it's imagined. The change was small, but I was happy with it. Just doing some detail work here on the lines. It helps me understand the form because I don't have a skeleton resting on a moon to reference, so I wanna be sure I understand the form. Drawing in the bones of the foot here, just working on the metatarsals, trying to keep it playful and not too anatomical. I, I like my skeletons to have a, a sense of life and being playful and happy. I don't like them to be macabre. All the skeletons I draw have a big heart, which is usually the light source. Oh, this is the fixative I use. It's a good technique to start spraying on the side and then move across. I do two coats on my wooden panel just to cover the drawing. Once it's dried, I use clear gesso and I just give it um, one coat of clear gesso. I know this is probably overkill, you know, to just protect the drawing. Some artists only use the fixative. Even I just use the fixative sometimes, but I wanted to sandwich it between <laughs> a layer of clear gesso. I don't know. Just, uh, I had some clear gesso, thought I'd use it. After the coat of clear gesso dries, I sand it down with sandpaper so it's relatively smooth. This is just a basic palette. I'll use a different palette when I'm painting the skeleton later. My first step is just to fill in the sky, you know, block it in, get it all painted in. I start with the big brushes, just trying to Fill it all in. I'm not using just one blue, I'm using some red also, you know, playing with the warm and cool. Trying to work all the angles. It's not a race, you gotta take your time. And you can see why drawing the individual bones of the feet here was so important. Here you can see my technique for spattering stars all over my painting. I'm sure to do it outside so I don't make a mess <laughs> inside. I think one of the problems, uh, one of the things to figure out for painting is to definitely figure out the order of things that you're going to paint. That's, that's important. And if you figure it out, you can avoid a lot of headaches. When I do this, I make sure my paint is pretty viscous, kind of like watered down honey. I use a, a Galkid, a Gamblin Galkid, to help it dry fast and help it get that viscosity.
before the stars dry, I'm sure to wipe off the dots that are on the moon and the skeleton. Here you can see me laying in the eyes and the heart, which are like the light sources of the skeleton of the whole painting. And doing that helps me envision where the light is in this, in this imagined painting. You know, I don't have a skeleton laying on a moon with a glowing heart. Because I don't have a visual reference and I'm just painting what I imagine and envision, it's really important that you know that I've studied, you know, things in life. I've looked at light, the way it falls, the way it's blocked, the way it reflects and bounces. Those studies from life are really important in doing something that is imagined. At this point, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted the moon to be, but I did know that um, I wanted the skeleton to be the light source. So here you can see me kind of laying in where I think the core shadow is for the moon and using a big brush. I wanted the moon surface to be pockmarked with craters and it was really helpful knowing where the light source was to envision all that. And you can see I'm just using value. You know, I'm using black and white, really just kind of working on values. Where the light source is, it's gonna be brighter and where, where it's further away from the light source, it's going to fade. After I get the values down on the moon, I let it dry so I could paint a transparent overlay of blue for the moon. Here you can see my setup and my palette. It is a gradient, you know, basically warm and cool gradients, and I'm using linseed oil to help the paint flow. There you can see the transparent overlay of blue that I'm putting on the moon. Because I had the values right, I didn't really need to worry so much. Oh man, it is, <laughs> it's a little heartbreaking that my camera didn't record me painting in the finishing details here. Ugh. But here's a close up of the finished product, you know. I really enjoyed painting this and stay tuned for more videos guys, thanks.